Factory Design Utilities from Autodesk um, has many, many different components and assemblies which you can use um, when creating your factory layout. Um, what it might not have, or what you might want to do, is actually use some of the existing uh, components that you have created where before you started using the factory utilities. Uh, so to do that, uh, we can create our own asset as well. As, as you can see, we can create them, you know, if you have a, a model open at the moment, model as a part, model as assembly. Uh, you can import your DWG solids as well. Um, you can look, you know, DWG solids from Vault is great out because we haven't got, we haven't logged into the Vault yet. Or you can import a model. Okay, so um, importing a model, I'm going to go browse to my asset creation and uh, we're going to create this uh, robot controller or convert this robot controller into a factory asset. Okay, so it brings this in over here and what you can see is uh, it opens up the asset builder tab over here and, and as in all Autodesk products, um, you know, the nice thing about it's got the panel at the top so you know your user interface is pretty similar um, and uh, you know sort of work from left to right like a book okay so uh, we start from left over here landing surface so with this landing surface over here I'm going to specify that it needs to be um, on the bottom over here okay so you know the bottom over there if I wanted to I can make the landing top of there so to turn it upside down like that okay so I'm going to put on the bottom over there uh, with my Z pointing up um, insertion point, okay, so the insertion point you want to uh, put on the back of here, so I'm going to just select uh, these two uh, points at the back. Uh, you can have a plane offset, so if you want it to just be slightly off that working plane, if I maybe put in 100 millimeters, you'll see that it's, it's offset into the floor, um, so minus 100 would be, you know, sort of um, minus 100 above the floor, okay. Um, we want this to be on zero. Okay, so um, we've set our, our landing, so that's that's going to be the factory floor, that uh, surface area that you see over there, that surface. Um, then we need to find the define the connectors. So the connectors are, you know, how it's going to snap to other objects uh, that you're placing. So select define connector, and I'm going to go define it at the bottom over here. Now you'll see there that my Z is pointing, you know, sort of to the bottom right over there. I actually want my Z to be pointing upwards. Um, so to, to redefine that Z axis, we select the arrow, uh, the blue arrow. Um, so if you don't know how to remember uh, which is the Z axis um, with the colors that you actually see, um, you'll see there, so let me just do that again. Um, you'll see there you've got red, green, and blue, RGB, and that's X, Y, and Z. So X would be red, G would be green, uh, um, your, your Y would be green, so RG, and then blue would be your Z axis. So selecting your, 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 blue, your Z axis over there, and it's now pointing up, which is what I want. Select OK. Um, like as in AutoCAD, I can just uh, click on spacebar, and it goes back into the last command that I've uh, done. And then let's go and specify my other connection points over here. Once again, we need the Z to be pointing up. Um, there we go, right click and OK. Okay, so you can see there's these two little green dots that are now um, visible. Uh, and you can also see that you've got your connector three and four and your insertion points over here and then your landing surface as well. Um, if you do want to know a little bit more about how to create your assets, we do have the asset builder guide as well. Uh, that brings up a little uh, window on the side over here and you can there go and see open asset builder, select landing surface, define connector, define asset properties, parameters and so on and so forth. So uh, with this over here on the left hand side you can see there's your key parameters okay um, and if I look into my asset variants I'm able to now go and actually give some variants over here. So I've set up some variants if I just you know sort of take it away um, you'll notice so, so how I actually uh, bring that in so this is how it would start off you know you select whatever parameter you've created so what I'm actually doing now is I'm saying I want to create different variants of this this factory asset um, and I want it to have different widths so by going into the properties after I've placed the asset I'm then able to very quickly go and just choose which variants I want and then um, you know increase or decrease the size of my width so the column that I want would be width and then you're gonna say I need to add more variants now you can give your variants a name so I'm gonna say uh, let's just do 1000 millimeters 
Okay, let's make this. Um, let's see what the error message is. Okay, no blank spaces. So this is very much like your your parameters. So underscore. Okay, then uh, let's make this one two hundred, and then one four hundred. Okay, so those gonna be the different sizes, and then you obviously have to put in the actual size, although it's not going to work. Okay, 1400 and select okay. Okay, so then this width of here will either say so at the moment is 1000 and with variant 2 and 3 I can make it 1200 and 1400 as well. Um, you can also go and look at your asset properties um, and there we got, you know, summary uh, project properties over here, descriptor, the process. So if you're going to use, you know, so the process that it's got, um, how it's going to function. You can specify a layer as well and a color. So this is going to be on your 2D side, um, specifying the layer. Then you can just put any custom uh, properties in here as well. Once we've done this, we are now ready to to uh, publish the asset. But before we do that, I just want to show you. So you know we've had our width parameter automatically go into our asset variant, um, and that's controlled by your key parameters over here. So if I look at my parameters, you'll see there that width okay has a tick next to it under your key column so now if you also wanted to maybe do a variant with your length sorry you can go and put in your length and your your height as a as a variant as uh, well as a key parameter first of all and once i've done that if i go back to my asset variants it should pick it up so there you can see it's picked up length and height over there and i can bring it in and put another variant as well Okay, so, so once that's done, we can now go publish the asset. So I'm going to go publish. And uh, we'll then go place it into a new. Uh, okay, publish asset dialog box pops up. Okay, where the asset name controller 12A. Um, the thumbnail, what type of asset it is. Uh, do you want it to be the default view as the thumbnail or a current view? Okay, so it's the current view we got over there. And where do you want to save it? Do you want to save it under your local drive? Do you want to save it in your cloud asset library? Or do you want to save it in the vault library as well? Okay, so if I go in here, you can see there I'm going to put under my user assets. Or you can create a new folder there by just clicking on this little plus button over here. Now, under your 3D options tab, you can also go and additionally simplify it. So if I maybe go to custom one, go to options, you'll see there I've got my, my simplify options over here. Um, which you can then go further simplify. We already simplified this quite a lot, uh, so we don't actually need to do this. You can also ge automatically generate your Navisworks model from this. And under your 2D um, options, you'll see they publish the 2D asset as well. So it's automatically while doing our 3D asset, um, publishing our 2D asset as well uh, for the use in, in your AutoCAD architecture with the factory design utilities. Now, um, you know you want that because you know once you place your 3d asset you don't want to go have to manually recreate the 2d asset you want it to be created automatically as well um so there we go if you want to take a look at what the 2d representation uh, looks like just click on this little button key over here okay it's just opening up you can see at the bottom um, and then it basically takes like a snapshot from from the top um of the the model over there so that's why your your z axis is quite important uh, so that it knows uh, when you do place it in uh, in your your 2D, um, it's the correct uh, the correct uh, representation you've got over there. Okay, so it's just creating. Just while we are over here, you can also go look for a sketch, or you can actually choose a DWG file that you've already created. Um, so there we go. So that's what the 2D representation is going to look like. Uh, you know, you've got your paper space as well. So uh, there we go. It's just a little bit of a graphics issue. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Okay, and I'm going to go and select on okay. This assets over here. So we've uh, at 52%. Okay, so we've published the asset. Let's now go make it work for us. So we're gonna to go to our factory tab and click on new layout. 
and we're going to go import or insert this newly created asset uh, into our assembly okay so one th different thing you'll see about the assembly over here is there's a ground plane so this you won't see in a normal uh, event assembly so that's your factory layout and that's your zero zero points over there which also will tie in with your zero zero point your origin uh, in your autocad so now that we've got this i'm going to go to my palettes and uh, with my asset browser and we're going to go choose our user assets over here uh, controller 12a and we're going to go and drag and drop that into our layout okay and there we go so there we've created our first asset if i bring in this control over here it's a different controller you'll see that it actually picks up the connector that i i created and there we go so now it's connected the two over there and now we've got these two uh, controllers sitting side by side two different controllers yes they look the same but you know i've made it different now what uh, we can do is if i select the object over here and look at my factory properties you'll see there i've got my layers height length and then a selected variant okay so now with my selected variant i've got my 1000 1200 Okay, so very much like your, uh, well, it basically is your um, multi-value parameters that you would create. So 1200, okay, doesn't update, but we go click on the update button and you should see that gets a little bit longer. Let's just keep the cursor over there. So it's bumped up to be a little bit bigger. Um, so great, yeah, so, so there's that. Now let's go take a look at this in your, your 2D. So we've created it, we created our 2D asset. Uh, let's just go make sure that it's, uh, that we've synced properly with the AutoCAD. So synchronize with AutoCAD. And uh, let's see how this works. Okay, so it's asking us to open up in AutoCAD now. Yes, I want to open up in AutoCAD. Okay, so it's opened up in AutoCAD and here you can see that I've uh, got my factory asset over there if I now had to you know bring in a 2d library of course it will go update in my in my 3d inventor as well and that is how you create a your own assets um, within inventor um, and additionally creating a 2d asset in AutoCAD as well thank you very much for watching